I wanted to do another quick little video on using a photo for background changing uh, because there's been a lot of buzz about it. Now, I really think as we go into the Christmas season, you may not want to just do this for every image, every session, because it'll be, a, you know, it could be a lot of work. Um, but, you know, I think if you're wanting to do do it and not store a million backdrops that's that's helpful i do digital backdrops as well as i have my own printed backdrop collection um and so this is one of my backdrops from my printed backdrop collection uh and you can see that um i've added it in here okay so you can see here is the background so if we look at before and after here's the before and here's the after okay and really it's pretty simple i think the biggest challenges that i see is you can't resize the original image right we can only do it for the background and so it can be a little bit challenging because you want to make sure that your original subject is sized correctly so it's almost better to bring in an unedited image for example i tried to use one of these images and they were already cleaned up and closer and so that's not going to work. So then what I did was I pulled in an unedited image and the scale looks much better. So these are all ones before and after original tree farm, new digital, uh, where you can see this is original tree farm, digital. Uh, I haven't done that one yet and here. And it's really super simple. Um, if I just go to the before and just go to the history, and we'll just undo what I did. Here's the original, okay? Now, I picked this one because it's further out, and so I shouldn't really worry too much about the size. And I just imported this image, okay? I have tons of backdrops because I obviously teach AI, and so I teach my students how to create their own backdrops. All these backdrops were created using Midjourney, and then I edit them, fine tune them, tweak them. It's important to make sure that they're upscaled. I use Topaz Photo AI to upscale. Um, I mean, I have thousands and thousands and thousands of Christmas images. These I print as physical backdrops as well as I have digital. And I have tons in, I mean, I just, I've been doing this for three years now. So I have a lot of images, okay? So you can, a lot of people are saying, where do you get them, where do you get them? You can obviously go to Etsy and buy them, or you can just go to Midjourney and source your own and then learn how to upscale them. Once you learn how to do your own, you're gonna kind of get addicted and, and you'll probably never buy another backdrop again. The reason why I like creating my own is I don't wanna use a backdrop that someone else has done. Um, because I want it to be unique. So that's why I like creating my own backdrops. So all I did once I imported it, make sure it's under 10 meg, is I just clicked on it, okay? So then when you come down here, you have the options. And I'm sure Voto will keep changing it and making you know the options better and better. You know, So this is, you can just figure it out. Is this center fill? Is this center alignment? Is it stretch fill? Like figure out what's gonna work best for your image. Okay, the size, is it bigger, is it smaller? You know, do you want it to go up? Do you want it to go down? You know, where do you want the placement? You just kind of have to play around. The biggest thing is the shadows, right? We don't want it to look copy paste. So dropping in the shadows, retaining the shadows, whether it's all of them or a little of them is gonna be super important in making sure it looks realistic. People are always saying, how do you retain? How do you retain the shadows? A photo has it built right in here for you. You can choose, you know, soft, hard. You can choose all of this, the blur, the gradient, the blur range. So, you know, this is important knowing that you can do all of it. One of the things I like to do is kind of once I'm done, I kind of like to go to their color adjustments. I like to go and play with some of their different profiles because sometimes I feel like when you blend the image, it may look a little bit better once you use their profiles and maybe not, but it's something to experiment with. Um, I, I love the backdrop changer. I think it's amazing. Do I think it does, do I think it needs improvement? Of course, like anything, it's just going to get better and better and better. Um, you've just got to, you know, play around, take some time with it, pick the right images that go with the background and then just go. It really doesn't take that much time. Once you kind of find the right backdrop, then the rest is pretty easy to me. 
it's finding the right backdrop, which is the hardest thing. So super quick tutorial. I hope this helps you and you can see how easy it is.